everyone, Mr. P here uh, with a lesson on the Black Arts Movement, which will serve as background for our creative response and gallery walk assignment. Uh, so uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, the Black Arts Movement is a movement that starts in the 1960s and uh, really goes through the 70s. Uh, and while some historians will end it in 75, uh, it really extends beyond that uh, in terms of the foundation for the movement of the late 70s and 80s, uh, and uh, so we still see the connecting threads to, to Black Arts movements today. Uh, Larry Neal described uh, the Black Arts movement in this way. He said, Black art is the aesthetic and spiritual sister of the Black power concept. The Black arts and the Black power concept both related broadly to the Afro-Americans' desire for self-determination and nationhood. Larry Neal was one of the important uh, poets of this movement. So this movement is part of the Black Power movement in that the activists of the Black Power movement, the organizers, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the artists, activists of the Black Arts movement all shared uh, this desire for Black self-determination. While they didn't all view nationalism in the same way, uh, generally speaking, they adhered to a more nationalist um, uh, uh, kind of ideology and had connections and relationships with many of the organizers in the New Africa Independence Movement uh, and some of these more nationalist movements, uh, the Black Power Movement uh, uh, Party, uh, etc. Uh, here's a, a conference flyer for Black Power Conference in 1968 here in Philadelphia. Philadelphia hosted um, a couple of Black Power Conferences, actually, uh, at the Church of the Advocate in North Philly. Uh, Amiri Baraka opens the Black Arts Repertory Theater, which stays open for about a year or two, and it's seen as the defining moment in the start of the Black Arts Movement. This happens after Malcolm X's death. Amiri Baraka felt inspired by, um, you know, some of Malcolm X's ideas, and he moved from the Lower East Side to Harlem and, and started this theater. Uh, now, there's a lot of emphasis on Amiri Baraka in the movement. He's seen as the kind of founder of the movement. Uh, however, it, you know, he's also criticized at times for being, you know, somewhat sexist and homophobic. And uh, for me, I, 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 you know, there's some pieces I love of Amiri Baraka's, um, uh, but I also want to emphasize in this movement the, the women uh, and the queer folks who really... Um, form so much of this movement. Just like with the Harlem Renaissance, uh, you have some of the more conservative elements, uh, some of the more, um, you know, assimilationist elements of the movement. Uh, and and then you have, you know, the, the folks um, uh, like Langston Hughes uh, and Zora Neale Hurston, who, Wallace Thurman, who uh, are anti-assimilationist uh, and um, kind of form their own subgroup. You have folks like Ma Rainey, uh, you know, with her Prove It On Me Blues um, track that, uh, you know, put um, kind of black women's sexuality and queer sexuality um, kind of in people's faces and was like, you cannot, you know, silence this. Uh, we have a similar dynamic in the black arts movement, except that the black arts movement much more broadly is anti assimilationist just in different ways. Uh, and so, you know, the thrust of this movement, all these artists uh, were, you know, uh, kind of affirming uh, uh, the kind of beauty of blackness uh, and the, um, uh, and we're also uh, tr trying to reject kind of white uh, America's view and gaze of um, uh, of the uh, of Black America. Uh, and so you have Audre Lorde, a, a queer Black woman who um, you know does a lot of work, uh, a lot of poetry, a lot of education, um, a lot of essays, a lot of speaking. Uh, we're going to talk about Suzonge Shange in a little bit. James Brown and Nina Simone are two of the um, kind of uh, kind of most important singers of the movement. Uh, James Brown, "Say It Loud," um, a Black and I'm Proud uh, performance. Uh, Nina Simone, um, you know, her performance of Four Women, her uh, performance of Mississippi Goddamn. Um, you know, uh, kind of all of these uh, pieces, Young, Black, and Gifted, uh, incredible piece, all of these pieces um, uh, kind of form part of this movement. June Jordan, another queer Black woman um, poet, uh, talks a lot about police brutality um, and, and a range of other themes. Elizabeth Catlett, we're actually going to 
talk about her more specifically in a bit, Nikki Giovanni, James Baldwin, a, a queer black essayist, poet, thinker. Um, the piece that I've linked for as an option is, um, it's somewhat long, but it's uh, incredibly powerful. And he's just a really good with his um, kind of social critique of the time. Uh, Sonia Sanchez here in Philadelphia, moved to Philadelphia. Uh, we're gonna talk about her. Uh, so let's start with Shange's work. Uh, she um, demonstrates how one can use dance alongside or integrated, entangled with poetry, movement with words as liberatory forces. Uh, she believes that um, bodies and words have to go together. They're entangled together. And so all of her work is really mostly this choreo poem uh, genre where her, her poetry is choreographed. It involves movement and song. Uh, and so much of her work emphasizes uh, black womanhood um, and and the experience, the range of experiences of, of black womanhood. Uh, so you know, I, I really um, uh, kind of really inspired by her work. And and there's a great link here to listen to some professors talk about her work. Uh, Sonia Sanchez um, standing here next to Queen Mother Moore and. Uh, activist for reparations with the new Africa independence movement. Um, Sonia Sanchez, like I said, right, the, the black power movement, uh, black nationalist movement and the black arts movement were very much linked. They were friends with one another. Um, she writes um, about the importance of language. And so uh, I'll just read this quote here. It is the love of language that has propelled me. That love of language that came from listening to my grandmother speak black English. It is that love of language that says simply to the ancestors who have done this before you. I am keeping the love of life alive. The love of language alive. I am keeping words that are spinning on my tongue and getting them transferred on paper. I'm keeping this great tradition of American poetry alive. Uh, and so the importance of uh, vernacular uh, as a medium for the black arts. Uh, this is something that, um, you know, Zora Neale Hurston began to do in the Harlem Renaissance uh, with her book, um, Their Eyes Watching God. Uh, Sonia Sanchez and most uh, black arts movement artists, um, you know, use in some way, shape or form the vernacular uh, and, uh, and affirm its validity. Uh, and Sonia Sanchez, here's a poem where she calls for a true revolution uh, that goes beyond catchphrases, capitalist materialism, uh, temporary pleasure. Um, uh, and you'll see how she also challenges some of the um, kind of traditional structures of language. Uh, so you notice here, right, when she writes black, she leaves out um, the A and the C. This was just an experimentation. Um, when she writes white he, down here, she leaves out the H. Uh, experimentation with language to push against traditionalism, to push against what is expected. Uh, so uh, I'll read this piece for you. Um, who's going to give our young Black people new heroes? Instead of catch phrases, instead of Cadillacs, instead of pimps, instead of white whores, instead of drugs, instead of new dances, instead of chitterlings, instead of 35 cent bottle of ripple, instead of quick in the hallway of white America's mind. Uh, this piece is from um, her collection called We Are Bad People. Uh, and it, it, it kind of showcases the importance of um, substantive revolution uh, with some of the artists um, and in their what they're thinking about. Uh, here's a piece from her, um, a blues book for a blue black magical woman, uh, women. Uh, and so this is a piece, um, a, a chunk called Woman um, from a longer poem called Past. Uh, and I'll just read part of it. Uh, come ride my birth, Earth Mother. Tell me how I have become and became this woman with razor blades between her teeth. Sing me my history, O oh Earth Mother, about tongues multiplying memories, about breaths contained in straw. Pull me from the throat of mankind where worms eat, O oh Earth Mother. Come to this black woman, you, rider of earth uh, pilgrimages. Tell me how I have held five bodies in one large cocktail of love and still have the thirst of the beginning sip. Tell me, tell me, Earth Mother, for I want to rediscover me, the secret of me, the river of me, the morning ease of me. So stop there. Uh, the importance of history, 
the importance of uh, black femininity and womanhood. Um, you know, many of these artists could be considered womanists in some ways, right? The kind of, you know, black feminism uh, and the importance of telling stories of, and that's connected to, right, African heritage. Sonia Sanchez is very much about connecting African heritage with black communities in the United States. And, and uh, you know, this line about tongues multiplying memories. That's oral history, that's storytelling history, that's the history of everyday people. Uh, and so naturally I'm you know, really, you know, love this piece. Natsungay uh, Shange uh, in this piece, it's happening but you don't know about it, highlights uh, black woman's sensuality. Just like, uh, you know, similar to Ma Rainey uh, in the Harlem Renaissance, the need to uh, kind of not allow this to be silenced uh, was an important piece to many of these women in this movement. Uh, so she writes, these kisses are clandestine. No one can see them. I told them in my hand, should I be discovered? I stick them in my hair and my head gets hot, so I have to excuse myself. Under no circumstances can the legs that slip over my hips leave telling marks, sense of love. This would be unpardonable. So I am all the time rubbing my arms, exposing myself to river mists to mask the sweetness you leave me swilling in. Uh, the kind of forwardness of, of um, kind of sensuality and sexuality. Uh, this is a, 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 an important part of this, um, but also the experimentation with language, you know, should, uh, taking out the OUL, you know, uh, experimenting with language. Um, Sonia Sanchez uh, talks about how, you know, when she was in school, she would be called a um, yellow B word. Uh, she saw other people who were darker skinned called black B words. And so this, she's highlighting the importance of colorism, the significance of colorism and the need to fight it uh, in this piece. And, and this piece is really an affirmation of blackness in all shades. Uh, she writes, hi, yellow black girl, walk in like the sun you be move on even higher. Those who laugh at your color have not moved to the blackness we be about. Because as Curtis Maysfield be saying, we people be darker than blue and quite a few of us be yellow, all soul, shades of blackness. Yeah, I, hi, yellow black girl, walk your black song because some of us be hearing your sweet music. Uh, so affirmation uh, is so important to so many of these pieces. Uh, uh, and these po and these this poetry, uh, women played a key role in visual art as well. Uh, the um, this group called the uh, Where We At Black Women Artists Collective was founded by Kay Brown, Dinja McCannon, and Faith Ringgold, and they gathered black women artists. They created exhibition opportunities for their work um, on their own at various um, black owned galleries, but they also fought for representation at galleries like the Whitney in New York. And so uh, uh, this group of black women visual artists was super important in pushing for, um, you know, representation, but also uh, uh, exhibition in their own spaces. Uh, here's a piece called Revolutionary Sister by Ginger McKinnon, uh, Maya's Quilt of Life, uh, Faith Ringgold's The People's Flag. Uh, you know, Faith Ringgold does incredible work um, kind of exposing uh, white or uh, American hypocrisy while affirming, you know, kind of black life and, and portraying the kind of complicated pieces to black life. Um, you know, her piece on uh, her quilt of uh, Aunt Jemima is really great retelling the story of Aunt Jemima away from the kind of, you know, um, uh, kind of mammy stereotype. Uh, Elizabeth Catlist's work, she's an Afro-Mexican artist, uh, spent her life in the US and in Mexico later on. Um, her pieces, uh, Sister Here, uh, Sharecropper, Survivor, uh, Seated Woman, uh, Black is Beautiful, Malcolm X Speaks. Um, you know, she's portraying a range of Black experiences, the struggles, the beauty, um, uh, the activism, uh, the womanhood. Uh, Emery Douglas, we've already talked extensively about him, so I'm not going to, I'm just going to mention him that, you know, he's the revolutionary artist of the Black Panther Party. We've already studied his artwork. Uh, the Black power aesthetic, the Black arts aesthetic was very present outside of, you know, artists. Uh, you know, we have Kathleen Cleaver of the Black Panthers, but we just have, you know, this, this art style, um, you know, the importance of kind of African uh, kind of aesthetics 
were were being adopted by the black community. Um, natural hair uh, symbolism, um, gun and fist symbolism. This stuff becomes widespread. Uh, you can check out more about the black power movements at these links. Uh, and finally, Dr. Karenga actually um, started Kwanzaa as part of this, which is associated with the black arts movement with the seven um, principles and values uh, that get integrated into many of the black nationalist movements at the